Welcome to a Legendarium special about Domitian, Rome's Mad Emperor. In this episode, we will talk about the promising early years of Emperor Domitian and how they were largely forgotten because of the Emperor's descent into paranoia and madness. Titus Flavius Domitianus, better known as Domitian, was born, unfortunately, on October 24th, 51 AD, on Pomegranate Street in Rome, the youngest son of the future Emperor Vespasian. His mother, Flavia Domitilla Major, died during his youth. And unlike his older brother Titus, Domitian did not share in court education, though many considered him intelligent. In December of 69 AD, while Vespasian fought a civil war against Emperor Vitellius, Domitian lived in Rome with his uncle Flavius Sabinus. When Vitellius's forces besieged Rome, they set fire to the temple where Domitian hid, but he escaped with a friend across the Tiber River. When Flavian forces retook the city, Domitian returned to Rome and temporarily became the head of the Flavian family. Romans even hailed the 17-year-old Domitian as Caesar, though real power lay with more capable men. Vespasian returned to the city in October of 70 AD, and Romans hailed him as the new emperor, no doubt persuaded by the sharp spears of his legions. Afterwards, although given titles and honors, Domitian never sought any real responsibility and thus received little. Poor preparation for a man who might become emperor. Vespasian, meanwhile, earned a reputation as a public-minded emperor in contrast to the wasteful Nero, most famous for turning Nero's golden house built for the pleasure of one man into the Colosseum, built for the pleasure of many at the tragic expense of others. After his father's death in 79 AD, Domitian's elder brother Titus became emperor and ruled for two years before death retired him from politics. At the time of his brother's death, Domitian traveled with Titus outside Rome when he died on September 14, 81 AD. Domitian abandoned his brother on his deathbed and hurried to Rome's Praetorian camp to declare himself emperor. Domitian's reign got off to a rocky start as rumors spread about his possible role in the sudden death of his still relatively young brother, Titus. Rumor, speaking with tongues of a thousand razors, claimed that Domitian poisoned his brother. Other scandal mongers claimed that the stricken Emperor Titus confessed to adultery with Domitian's wife Domitia. And still others claimed that Titus lamented making one mistake in his life, namely not murdering his treacherous brother Domitian before he killed him. Despite the questions surrounding his ascension, Domitian proved a capable administrator. Before the Flavians came to power, Rome remained in shambles from the Great Fire of 64 AD, during which Nero supposedly fiddled. Domitian restored the gutted ruins of many buildings and built a new temple to Jupiter, a new stadium, and a shiny new concert hall for musicians and poets. For himself, Domitian built the Flavian Palace on the Palatine Hill for official functions, and to the south, he constructed the Domus Augustana, where he held banquets and receptions. In financial policy, Domitian tenaciously fought inflation by insisting on keeping the amount of gold and silver in Roman coins high. He also limited vine growing to promote grain growing, reasoning that people needed bread more than they needed wine. He also urged magistrates to temper justice with mercy wherever they could. And despite the rumors swirling around his own ascension, Domitian fought a one-man crusade against behavior he judged degenerate. For example, he forbade male castration, scolded senators who practiced homosexuality, and censured the Vestal Virgins for supposedly loose morals. He even ordered one Vestal Virgin buried alive with her lover. 
Domitian liked games, hosting wild beast hunts and contests between female gladiators and dwarves, held by torchlight in nighttime battles within the Colosseum. He also held competitions to the death between infantry and cavalry and flooded the basement of the Colosseum for use in a mock naval battle between gladiators. On the military front, Domitian personally took command of the legions for a brief war against the Chadi tribe of Germania. Despite his war consisting of little more than wandering around the Rhenish countryside burning any village he found, Domitian awarded himself the title Germanicus. Domitian often wrote other commanders with advice which they tended to ignore. That might be one of the reasons why Domitian's reign saw stability, if not peace, along its northern border. Yet, despite his lack of military success, Domitian won the affection of his soldiers by becoming the first emperor since Augustus to give the army a pay raise, and his most notable endeavor became the Limes Germanicus, a network of roads, forts, and watchtowers along the River Rhine. This frontier divided the empire from Germanic tribes for the next two centuries. However, while both Domitian and the Roman public enjoyed these entertainments and victories, their cost took a toll on imperial finances. To pay for them, Domitian raised the Jewish tax imposed by his father upon Roman Jews and seized the fortunes of senators and wealthy Romans. When his niece's husband Flavius Clemens spoke up for the overtaxed Roman Jews, Domitian accused him of atheism and had him executed. Other rich men came to fear such accusations from Domitian, which would allow the emperor to seize their estates. Despite his achievements, Domitian remained a secretive man. Vain and self-conscious, he forced Romans to call him Dominus et Deus, or Master and God. He claimed to be a living god, much like Caligula, and ordered priests to worship the cults of his deceased father and brother. So many statues of Domitian appeared, ornamented with triumphal emblems, that a graffiti artist wrote, It is enough, upon one of these statues. Domitian even renamed two months after himself, September becoming Germanicus and October becoming Domitianus. Plots against the emperor began to emerge because of his vanity and high taxes. In September of 87 AD, several senators went to their deaths for plotting to murder Domitian. He also had to crush a mutiny by Lucius Antoninus Saturninus, the governor of Upper Germany, in 89 AD. These plots against him brought out the worst in the once capable emperor. Men began to die simply because Domitian grew jealous of them. He murdered Governor Lucullus of Britannia for inventing a new type of lance and naming it after himself. Agricola, the conqueror of northern Britannia, died because he reminded Domitian of his own shortcomings as a military man. Domitian's paranoia led him to hire informers in great households to learn of plots or rebels, and after arresting those possible rebels, he ordered interrogators to chop off their hands and burn off their genitals. He grew so paranoid that he lined the gallery where he took his daily walks with polished moonstone so it reflected everything behind him. Around 90 AD, Domitian invited Rome's aristocratic couples to a banquet. House slaves ushered the guests into a room decorated with black marble, black paint, and black velvet drapes lit by flickering funeral lamps. A gravestone engraved with the name of each guest waited at their place. Instead of soft couches, they reclined on rock-hard benches. Naked slave boys emerged from the shadows, painted black from head to toe. They carried food dyed black upon black onyx plates. Only the emperor's voice broke the tomb-like silence as he droned on about the inevitability of death and decay. After the meal, Domitian's men took the shaken guests home upon litters and most assumed they would be carried into back alley 
bodies and butchered. Instead, Domitian's men returned them to their homes, and the next morning, a messenger arrived at each guest door with a gift bag. It included their gravestone, an onyx plate, and the slave boy, now washed clean, doused in perfume, and made a gift to them. Unsurprisingly, this macabre dinner did nothing to endear Rome's ruling class to Emperor Domitian, and even his own wife and Empress Domitia came to fear him and likely joined a conspiracy which recruited an imperial staffer named Stephanus who feared for his life because of the emperor's paranoia. For several days, Stephanus faked an arm injury and wore protective wrapping. However, the bandage concealed a dagger. As Stephanus approached the emperor, he pulled out the dagger and stabbed the unsuspecting Domitian in the groin. He bled to death at only 44 years old. Domitian's old nurse Phylus interred his ashes in the temple of Flavian. Upon hearing of his death, the Romans sent became overjoyed. They denounced Domitian and passed the terrible decree of Damnatio Memoriae, namely the removal of Domitian's existence from public record. Men chiseled Domitian's name from inscriptions and smashed the faces of his statues. Paintings and coins bearing the late emperor's name went into the river, with senators often joining jeering mobs in destroying the late emperor's name. Only the soldiers continued to revere Domitian and they spoke of him as Domitian the God. And after the death of Domitian, the Senate elected a capable man named Nerva to take control of the empire, and he began the reign of what would become known as the Five Good Emperors, Rome's Golden Age. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.